Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I'm going to be honest. I can make an entire hour-long compilation video on the Chargers doing stupid things and screwing up on special teams. I've made multiple dumb decision episodes about the Chargers doing this, and you can check the most recent one out in the upper right corner. But what if I told you that there was a time where their ineptitude actually helped them? What if I told you that there was a time where the Chargers made a mistake on special teams and won the game because of it? This is the story of what might be the greatest penalty in NFL history. Here's the context behind the situation. It's November 5th, 1989, and we head to Jack Murphy Stadium for this matchup between the San Diego Chargers and the Philadelphia Eagles. At the halfway point of the season, these teams are trending in opposite directions. San Diego has lost each of its last four games, and sit at 2-6 with the second worst record in the AFC. Barring a miracle, their season looks dead in the water. Philadelphia, however, is trending in the complete opposite direction. They've won each of their last four games and sit at 6-2, and two, one game up on the wild card. So this is a big game for them, especially since they want to keep pace with the New York Giants, who lead the NFC East at 7-1. and one. At halftime, the Chargers and Eagles are all tied up at 7, as both teams scored on short passing touchdowns, with the Chargers scoring from 6 yards out in the first quarter on a Jim McMahon pass to Anthony Miller, and the Eagles scoring from four yards out in the second quarter on a Randall Cunningham pass to Greg Garrity. San Diego comes out of the halftime break firing on all cylinders and leads 17-7 after three after a 23-yard field goal by Chris Barr and a nice 69-yard touchdown by Jim McMahon to Anthony Miller. It looks like Dan Henning and company were going to pull off the upset victory. But the tie turned in the fourth. Steve DeLine hits a 43-yard field goal to cut it to a one-score game. And then... Jamie Holland drops an easy slant route, which gets picked off easily by Eric Allen. Holland wasn't on the Chargers after the 1989 season, and with plays like this, yeah, it's not hard to see why. That interception turned the tide, as Philly capitalized on the short field, and Keith Byers punched it in from three yards out to tie the game. Just like that, the Chargers had blown a double-digit fourth-quarter lead. And just as the Chargers look like they're going to retake the lead, Jim McMahon fumbles on third down in Philadelphia territory, and the Eagles recover. San Diego gets the ball back, though, after the Eagles punt it away in San Diego territory on fourth and inches. Would you have done the same here? Leave a comment down below telling me your thoughts on Buddy Ryan's decision here. As for how it turned out, it was a mistake. Despite being backed up, the Chargers were able to get into Philadelphia territory after Jamie Holland redeemed himself on this catch. San Diego doesn't take any chances, and with 8 seconds left after running the clock for a bit, they send Chris Barr out for a field goal. Now, keep in mind that this has been a pretty rough year for Barr. Barr had been around since 1976, and had just spent the past 9 seasons with the Raiders. This season with the Chargers, though, was going through a bit of a rough patch. As it turns out, this would wind up being Barr's final season in the NFL, as he had some struggles. The Chargers lost 17-16 to the Seahawks three weeks prior after Barr's game-tying extra point attempt got blocked and his game-winning field goal attempt missed. He missed a kick against the Giants the week after, and he missed a 33-yard field goal earlier in this game against the Eagles. Now here he was, lining up for a 44-yard field goal to give the Chargers a stunning victory. The kick misses. It's not even close. It goes wide left, and we are heading for overtime. Except we're not, because something happened here before the snap that wound up saving San Diego big time. Pay attention to number 70 here. He's the fourth guy from the left. He moves before the snap. Eagles defensive tackle Mike Pitts got him to move. Whether Pitts jumped into the neutral zone and it should have been a penalty on Philadelphia, I don't know. But I think that this was illegal motion on the right tackle here. And that's exactly what the referees call. Illegal motion on tackle James Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick was the team's first-round choice in the 1986 NFL Draft, and he was a bit of a bust. Anytime you're the 13th overall pick, and you wind up starting just 14 games for the team that drafted you, yeah, that's not a good sign. But this penalty was the greatest play of his career. Because of the illegal motion, the whistles blew the play dead before the ball was kicked, and that meant that the play was dead. 
it never happened. Yes, Barr was now moving five yards back to make this a 49-yard field goal, but compared to the alternative, the Chargers now had second life. What's funny is that the fans booed when the referees called illegal motion. I'm not sure that they realized that this was the most beneficial penalty ever. And with that, Barr lined up for the new 49-yarder. Take a look at what happens next. So they reset the clock at eight seconds. They move it back, and it'll now be a 49-yard attempt for Barr. Come on, Sam, yeah! Do it! Oh. He gets a reprieve. Dan Hennig said this is why he wanted Chris Barr over Steve DeLine, who was here earlier with San Diego. He said Chris Barr has that experience in the critical situations to make the kick when needed. His longest is 39 this year. He's five for seven. This is from 49 yards. Chris Barr, though, is in his 14th NFL season, and believe me, he's seen these kinds of situations and opportunities before. His career longest is 55. Now the rush becomes very much more important because the ball's going to be a little bit lower when it comes out of here. drills it. The Chargers lead 20-17 to 17 with four seconds left. After the Eagles try a pitchy-pitchy woo-woo play, as the legendary Scott Van Pelt likes to call it, the Chargers stop it and win 20-17. to 17. Although I will say that if the return man looked at the top of the screen instead of the bottom, the Eagles probably score here, and we're still talking about this play today. But the Chargers pull off the upset because James Fitzpatrick committed the greatest penalty of all time. As coach Dan Henning said afterwards, that's the first time I can ever remember a penalty helping me. Penalties are normally awful. They're drive killers. They're momentum killers. You don't want to get penalized. But in 1989, a penalty committed by the Chargers actually won them the game. James Fitzpatrick might have found a way to commit the greatest penalty in NFL history. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jarrogator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.